Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Lawrence Plays Factorio Angel Bobs. I've had a bit of a fail with the previous episode, unfortunately. Um, it was supposed to... Uh, unfortunately, I managed to record the wrong th wrong part of my screen, so that's... Um, well, let's just say I've junked that episode. I'm going to give you a quick um, run over of what I did in the last one uh, before I get started here. So as you can see, we've got the... Um, the metal processing facilities up here. This is all running quite happily and, and uh, relatively relatively slowly, admittedly. Um, and then it's feeding through to all of the machines across here, uh, which are passing up the the minerals, uh, the metals up to, up to, up to the, all these warehouses in, in ingot form. Um, now it's, it's jammed up because I'm not using up enough iron. This is get this has got clogged up and is um, is no longer feeding through here. I'm going to have to put some sort of cunning filtering systems on here. But that I'll do that I'll do that a bit later, I think. But in general, it's working quite well. We've got a steady trickle of all of the different resources coming through. Uh, I think I'm probably going to have to speed up how much is made of these at some point. But we'll wait until it, until we've got things a bit more stable before we do any more of that. So we've got that working. Um, there was oh another thing I did was I up, I've just updated to um, Factorio Beta 18. So there's a, a few things have changed. One of the most obvious ones is the map is now much bolder colours, and that's making me go. What? Every time I zoom out on it, um, but yeah, these these colours look much deeper and much more um, well, just much more really. Uh, I guess we'll see how much get how, how long it takes me to get used to this and stop going wow every time I zoom out. But the next big thing I did, so before I had um, these lines, this line running up here and various stations along here, like this Bobmonium unloading station here, which as you can see I've I've ripped out. And as part of this reinstall, I seem to be getting all the achievements again. But let's ignore that. So. Yeah, I've ripped all of these stations out um, and then replaced them with all of these stations, which means I've fitted in a lot more of them because they're all um, going crossways rather than lengthways. So there's a lot more space. And then each of these is going to be feeding through a, um, a smelting facility like this and then onto belts. And if necessary, I can probably put in two, maybe three, maybe even four of these in line across here. But at the moment, I'm going to I'm going to start off by trying it with just one and see how that goes. It's probably not going to be enough, but you know we'll see. And the idea is this will take in the ingots that come from down here, down here in this sort of massive metal processing facility, and then smelt them down into the into the plates that are being used for the less common metals. Now, for for the um, for the iron and the copper, I'm going to have that just unloading straight plates from from these facilities because I expect that to be used up in significantly larger quantities than the other metals. We'll see how that goes. Um, I've also not built it up fully here because this was this um, sulfuric acid facility was in, in the way and that's dealing with the sulfur dioxide produced by this lead facility. So the problem I've run into is all of these can contain enormous quantities of of whatever material was was it was coming was being used here. So there's there's 39,000 rubite stored in these in these chests, and so until I've used up all of enough lead to to use that up, I can't really link another system in here because it'll just well because there's so much so much resource here it's going to be an enormous pain to deal with it. I could perhaps drive up here with a um, uh, with a construction vehicle, load it all up, and then drive down to the down here and try and find somewhere to put it all. Um, perhaps, in, yeah, into, into these warehouses, obviously. Um, and yeah, that certainly is a way of dealing with it. And I'll probably end up doing that at some point <coughs> once I get once I get fed up of it all, all just sitting here getting in the way. But for now, I thought I'd let it trickle through a bit. The bigger concern is this one here, where it's been crushed and sorted. And I've got a load of nickel and lead and um, and slag in this warehouse, and that's another what 22 to so 30 another 30,000 in there alone, and that's going to be harder to deal with because I don't have any any warehousing for the for the ores that come for the individual metal ores that are just getting sat on these on these um, belts, because they're coming off in a sort of a just-in-time system. They're getting as fast as they're being produced by these floaters, they're getting smelted by these machines down here. So I don't have anywhere in between to put them. So that's going to be more of a problem, especially with some of the more weird things, like like this whole Jeevalite system here, where we're... Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff coming off here. So this is, this is going to be harder to untangle. 
I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do about all of this, but yeah, we'll see. At the moment, I've stopped putting in, I've stopped feeding in any inputs, so eventually it should trickle, th it should work its way through it all and eventually get down to nothing left. But there's 57,000 in this. That's going to take a long time to get pumped through, especially, I mean, you see how slowly this is running. It's going to take approximately forever. And I've got, I've got lots of stuff being stored in this warehouse as well, and that's stuff I don't really want and I don't know what to do with. So, yeah, I was quite tempted to just sort of say, sod it all, I'm going to forget this, I'll build a new bus with, with hookers and blackjack, I'll put it over here somewhere, or down here, or I don't know, but I don't really have a good way of rampaging through the biters yet, so, uh, I don't know, I've sort of bottled out on that one a bit. So I'm now left with this system here. Well, so these stations are all very nice, and they'll be great for unloading it. Um, but there's a bit of a mess down here working out how to deal with all of that. And the other thing is getting in the new materials. So I'm going to have to put aluminium on here somewhere as well. That's going to be tricky because there isn't very much space along here. So some challenges there, should we say. Um, that's going to be interesting. Another thing I did was I had a look at um, blue circuit boards. They're not called blue circuit boards. What are they called? Here we go. Blue, blue circuit boards are called superior circuit boards. Well, la -di -da. Um So, and I had a look through the list of ingredients here, and it, most of it doesn't seem too difficult. Ferric chloride solution is a solved problem. Gold plate, it, it's not something I've got yet, but it's something I can get fairly easily. Copper plate, obviously, I can get. Fiberglass board, I think I have might have sorted solved that one before I'm not sure um oh so that's need need oh okay so that's needed for superior circuit and then solder and electronics components transistors are all sort of solved problems integrated circuits I think are something else I'll have to do but again that's mostly solved I don't remember that being quite like that but when I looked at it before I'm a little bit worried some of the recipes might have changed with with the upgrade I've just done <laughs> um, if so, I may have some unexpected problems and some debugging to do, but we'll we'll see as we go along. This is going to be um, going to be an adventure. What else did I do? Um, oh yeah, I was another thing I commented on was I've got these stations unloading into into rows of chests rather than into um, into warehouses because it's it's a lot more efficient with space. It means this entire station is only about seven squares high. Yeah, seven squares high. Um, I've put them about a little bit further apart than that because I want to be able to fit all of this stuff in afterwards as well. But it does mean there's um, we're not taking up too much space for these stations, which is quite, which is quite nice. But it does mean that the chests don't tend to stay balanced. However, because they're balanced between the two train carriages, I don't think that's going to be a problem. If so, we'll well we'll we'll worry about it nearer the time. <laughs> Oh, and one other little bit of comedy that you, um, I'm afraid, I'm afraid you've missed out on. Um, so when I was when I was building all of this and I ripped out all the stations, I think there must have been a copper train going to my copper station here um, that got eventually got turned round and went back to the depot full of full of copper because I discovered I suddenly had a power cut. I came running up here to find out what had happened, and this entire belt was full of copper plates um, all the way back here. Loads in the warehouse loads in these chests over here so I did a bit of running around cleared all that up and eventually things are now back under control a bit more so uh, I think and that was that that was a bit of excitement to end the level uh, end the episode on otherwise I think that's I think that's basically everything I did so now we can uh, get back to building things and, and having a good think about what to do so I think I'm probably going to make this station up here an aluminium station because that's one of the first things I'm going to need. Or again, I'm, I'm approaching this the wrong way around. I'm saying, oh, I've got this new metal. Let's get it on the bus. What I should actually be doing is thinking about what I want to build next and then um, getting and, and then starting from there. So as I said, I was quite tempted to do um, blue circuits, but I think I'm probably going to build up a system somewhere else. A sort of a remote factory somewhere. I don't know. I'm just haven't, haven't haven't even thought about where yet. Um, I'm gonna need to find some space for it. That builds all the circuits. So the yellow ones, the red ones, and and the uh, and the new blue ones, and then bring them in to these stations. 
and dump them onto the bus so I don't have because this this isn't very expandable maybe if I think about it a bit more this time I'll be able to come up with something that's a bit more um, a bit more future proof and a bit more um, a bit more expandable and well we'll we'll, we'll see how that goes so then and obviously an, a, a potential next thing to do would be the next level of the um, science potions which I think is purple ones and I think I, I think I researched those so these ones yeah logistic science part packs that was the one um, what do they take brass flying robot frames express transport belts which take aluminium and cobalt so I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to make cobalt um, express filters and cobalt again okay that's not too bad that's cobalt basically cobalt and aluminium um, cobalt steel is going to be made by oh that's another thing I'm going to be doing <laughs> so I've got iron ingots coming down here and I need to bring in copper ingots as well uh, so that I can start down here I can start producing more different types of metals as well so these this iron I'm going to turn into steel the copper goodness knows but I'm just fairly sure I'm going to need it at some point um, oh yes along here I did a load of copy pasting and I've messed everything up so that needs fixing as well uh, but these so yeah I've in order to get that working I've built I built up some extra stations along here that we'll pick up that will I'll use to ship out the steel and the cobalt steel and the whatever else I start building as I come along further along here lots to do where am I making steel at the moment presumably it's coming off this iron belt here yes I've got a steel smeltery here that's just turning iron plates into steel with with the oxygen so that's yeah it, it works but it's not brilliantly clever I'm, I can probably do something a bit better with ingots I imagine um, and let's carry on researching. Oh yes, I was researching armor as well because I want to get up to uh, modular armor and power armor and stuff like that. So I've got power armor now. So that's got an equipment grid because I want to have things like the um, exoskeletons so I can run around like a headless chicken and just generally move a bit quicker because I'm getting a bit fed up with how slow I am and having to use a car all the time and that sort of thing. So let's start researching some of this stuff up as well. Um, so I can get these going. Right. Okay. That was a brief 15 minutes. Blimey. <laughs> I've been talking a bit longer than I meant to. Um, a a yeah, not so brief recap of what I've been up to recently. So let's get started. Now I need to decide what, which of those things I want to do first. Let's do the steel first because I think that's probably going to be relatively straightforward. However, first, I'm going to have a little diversion. So as you remember, when I was um, looking around here, I discovered I was having issues because this steel, this iron belt, this iron ore belt is completely full. So everything is backed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link up with my green wires, all of these warehouses, uh, so both of these warehouses, and I'm going to pass this along to the input for the iron processing. The plan being that if those warehouses are as full as they seem to be, then I'm going to stop pulling in iron ore from... I'm going to stop making iron ore. Oh, I'm being attacked. Uh, where am I being attacked? Not far away. Yikes, it's a big attack. Um, okay, do I have any plasma turrets? Yes, I've got ten of them. Excellent. I can't get through here. Ah. No, I found out last time I repelled an attack. I actually do need to have the construction vehicle with me in order to replace the turrets because I don't have those in my inventory. So let's grab that and head down there. Right, quick repair from the bots. Gets everything up and running again. And let's put down some plasma turrets to make sure this never happens again. Right, that wasn't too bad. Still, it was a slightly annoying distraction. At some point, when resources are cheap and plentiful and I have plasma turrets coming out of my eyeballs um, hopefully not literally I might head go all the way around the perimeter of the base and put plasma turrets absolutely everywhere just to stop this sort of thing happening because it is it is annoying having to drop everything and scurry off to deal with an attack when I'm in the middle of concentrating on building something okay so before I was so rudely interrupted I was stringing this green cable all the way along here 
And the idea is that if I've got if I've got more than enough iron down there, then that means this whole system can be safely turned off. So what what I'll do in order to do that is turn off these ore input belts down here. So what we've got at the moment, we've got 300,000 iron there. So let's say if iron plate is oh, enabled if iron plates is less than let's type in numbers 150,000. Right, so that should now be off. Yes, I think it is. And the same down here. Right, so that will now allow me to deal with the uh, iron that's coming through, the iron ores that's being produced. I mean, it, it's not, unfortunately, it's not going to actually fix it immediately. We're going to have to wait for the iron, for, the, for enough iron to be used up by the base to bring it back down to that sort of level. But once it does get down to that level, it won't go back up to 300,000 again, which is a frankly ridiculous amount of iron. I could put an artificial sink on it again, like I've done with the, um, like this one here with this copper ore. Um, how much is in there anyway? Only, tw only 21,000, that's not too bad. These machines have all gone to sleep as well. Does that mean my copper system is also equally full? It probably does. Uh, so again, let's come through here and do exactly the same thing for the copper. Yeah, again, 100, 306,000. I probably don't need to link both of them up, really. Um, either one would be fine, but, you know, that's for you. Uh, thorough. Right. I mean, I won't get to see that working for quite a while unfortunately but at least as we start to use the resources up a bit more it should it should drop and we've got another buffer here on the copper which is probably why that one's kept working and the other one hasn't but yeah I think this yeah this should mean that this will get used up first because anytime this as this as this drops a little bit we'll pull it all out of here not again <sighs> like I said I have a horrible feeling this episode is just going to be me reacting to biter attacks but that one's a long way away. This is too slow. Everything's going to have been destroyed by the time I get there. The car is a little bit faster. You know what I should actually be doing? I should have pulled a train out of my pocket. That would have been much more effective. Oh, who left that pipe there? Ah, uh, <laughs> driving is difficult. It does sound like the attacks have stopped. Oh, that's not good. I don't want biters in my base. I really don't. <laughs> oh, I didn't get any wall. I've got some wall. Goodness of that. Okay, no wonder they got through here. These defences are woeful woefully inadequate. <laughs> My car's escaping on the rail on the uh, conveyor belt. Oh god, half these turrets are still using um, basic ammunition as well. Yeah, I should have brought a construction vehicle up here because then I'd have been able to um, just copy and paste all this across around and use the bots to um, get it all up and running again properly. We don't even have power over here. Where's the nearest power supply? Up here. Oh dear. That's interesting. That must have been from a long time ago. Send that to... well it's a sapphirite train so I've sent sapphire drop two until empty and then to depot. oh I think the depot is not big enough I guess we'll find out <laughs> biter nest is closer than I would I ideally like although it does seem that it's been pretty quiet since I mean these turrets down the bottom as I said are just still using basic ammunition so they've obviously not seen a great deal of combat ah this is what I was afraid of there's not enough space in the um, in the depot for the number of trains I'm trying to put there. Well, there's two possible, two options here, really, isn't there? I can either make the depot bigger, or I can demolish a train. Let's make the depot bigger, like that. It's a bit of a mess down the bottom here, but yeah, never mind. And I guess I'll pull this train in manually. We're going to get the same problem again as soon as the next train comes around. Um, is this in a bot catchment area? No, no, it's not. Great. So this is this this station isn't going to get built. Oh, joy. Okay. Alright, for now I'm just going to demolish this train. So now I've finished fighting the, those fires, I think I'm going to start trying to produce slightly shorter episodes and, hope, and maybe um, release them a little bit more often as well. So I think I'm going to call it here. We'll, we'll head back over. Um, so this episode, I've told you what I did in the previous failed recording, and, we've, um, and then I set up these uh, limits on the copper and the iron or so, so that should keep those flowing a bit more smoothly out of the uh, the new system further down. In the next episode, I'm going to start off by 
taking the copper ingots down into the uh, metal sorting facility as well and then probably also start thinking about better ways of, of transport of, of dealing with the metals once they're made into ingots and see and see where it goes from there thank you for watching i hope you'll join me next time and um yeah as always let me know what you think